Hi there, I'm Frank Crenshaw. Finally got my modeling space done. Let's go have a look. We're okay to go in. The garage bay has been segmented into two sections. Off to the left is the modeling area, and off to the right is uh, my 3D printer area, which has been uh, created by this wall. This L-shaped wall creates a small nook where I can stick all of my 3D printer stuff in here, and everything fits. I was also able to uh, create some much needed storage by adding cubes below the bench, which supports the printer and the uh, processing area. The left side of the space is all about scale modeling. This first section is my photo booth. This is all collapsible. This all folds down and uh, sits on top of that little bench there and is completely out of the way. My last uh, workshop, this, the photo booth basically sat at the end of a modeling bench and it was constantly in the way of my scale modeling and it blocked off a large portion of my uh, pegboard and uh, it was really hard to get certain angles in photographs because the bench was so high that to get the camera high enough to get the angle really was just a, a pain in the butt. So I decided I needed my own special photo area and here it is. Just above it is the uh, paint rack system that I illustrated in my last uh, video. The next feature of the model room is, is my computer work area. This computer work area is just simply cut off the end of an extra long bench. I realized that I didn't need as long a bench as I had and uh, to make room for my photo booth I simply chopped a chunk of the, the bench off, lowered it to a appropriate level to work on as a computer, and got rid of my old computer table. So that, that basically opened up the space for, for me to have my own photo booth. And uh, this works perfectly. As I have mentioned before, I really am a big fan of pegboard. And uh, these are my two uh, work area pegboards. These are much smaller and much narrower than my previous uh, workspace. And the reason is, is I realized I didn't need giant sheets of pegboard. I was sticking things on the pegboard that really didn't need to be on the pegboard. Um, I was able to very much optimize what I was able to put up on my working pegboard. And that's what you see here. Um, especially over here. Now my workbench is much smaller, but it's still plenty big. I have no trouble working in this area. One of the things you often see and uh, people are selling uh, now is anti-spill holders, you know, to, things to hold your glue, things to hold your, you know, uh, bottles of uh, decal solvent, you know, all that. So I want to tell you a little story. My, I, I've only had trouble spilling glue when I've had what I call bench chaos. And bench chaos is you have kit all over the bench. And so what happens is, is you're, you're basically working in this little area right here. I mean, and this bench is just covered with various things because you're just doing stuff and you're not putting stuff away. You're not taking the time to put stuff away. So there's tools, there's just stuff lying around here. And so what happens is you wind up putting the glue here, right? So you can work because this is your effective work area, basically the size of my hand. And then you go reach for something, and that's what happens. You spill the glue. You know, oh, crap. You know, and so you think you're going to solve this, go buy a $15, $20 glue holder. That's really not what you need. What you really need to do is keep your glue back here. Because if you're not reaching over the top of it, if it's not stuck up against another object like this, it won't fall over if you hit it. So you put it basically out of the reach of your arm, just so you can dip, dip it in the glue. Use your glue and you won't have any trouble. Now, to avoid bench chaos, I use magnetic tool holders. Magnetic tool holders are key to having a, a, a fairly clear bench. And for me, this is really important. This is super important because, again, the, where the majority of disasters happen is when you have a very cluttered workspace. Um, and I'm not the type who really is good at, you know, using a file and then opening a drawer and putting the file back. I'll just leave it on the, on the table. But these magnetic tool holders solve that problem because, you know, if I'm using my file, well, I just put it back. If I'm using my uh, cutter, this is my um, optimized cutter that I, uh, that I uh, souped up and got me kicked out of Tamiya Magazine. But anyway, this is, uh, you know, I'm using it. And so then I just put it up. If you, if you have your tools in a place you can put them, and Pegboard provides you with that, that 
mechanism so that you can keep all that stuff pretty much put away. And then all you're working on is what's on your model. And I have enough workspace over here that if I have a kit open, you know, I can pull the parts out and I can, I can easily organize what I'm doing. And I'm not reaching over things that might accidentally get tipped over like glue. So think long and hard before you go buy these glue organizers because what you really, really want to do is you really just want to have a clean workspace. Because even if you have a holder for this glue, you've just created more bench chaos. The more crap you have on your bench, the more chaos you will create for yourself. And literally, the smaller your work area will become. It'll keep shrinking. And pretty soon you'll be working in a work area the size of a postage stamp. And I can say that because I've done that. I mean, you know, I, I'm... I'll show you a picture of my old modeling bench. At this end of the bench is one of my most important tools. This is my Cameo plotter. Um, this used to be where my 3D printer used to sit. And uh, my Cameo kind of sat over here. But, but now I have plenty of room just for the Cameo. This has really been a, a great... A great little addition to my modeling. I can't recommend this thing enough. It just I have more fun making masks than I can really describe. But this is where it now sits, and uh, this is my paint booth. And uh, the wall is that the 3D printer is on the other side of is right there. Um, this pegboard is offset from that wall by about seven eight inches, and the reason it's set offset is I have a a vent that runs from the back of this paint booth up and around and then it exits right about there. I think you can kind of see the, the hose right there. But uh, that's for the exhaust. But that's a terrible waste of wall space. So uh, what I did is I offset the, uh, I offset the, uh, um, I offset from the wall about seven inches and I just put this pegboard up there and that's all my tomato paint. And I do use tomato paint but mostly for colors that I have to mix. And uh, that's, that's sort of what I've been doing. But recently I've been uh, using pre-mixed Gun Z and AK, and I like that a lot better. I do have some Vallejo, and that's where my Vallejo is. But anyway, this, this is my paint storage, my, the other part of my paint storage. This paint booth right here is quite the neat little tool. One of the things that I did add, this is a feature from my last uh, modeling area, is uh, my Pace actually has some power control switches. But what I'm able to do is I'm able to turn on, I added under counter lighting. And that's just a, a light rope that runs around. Now these, these things right here are just plastic uh, shelving or pl plastic drawers. You can get those anywhere, um, office supply stores, Sam's Club, Walmart. But uh, any, anything that I need to store uh, are, are stored in here. And the fact that they're stackable has really been helpful. I don't know if you can tell, but... The distance from the shelf to the floor here is uh, much less than it is down here. This is much greater, and that's because this floor actually slants pretty steeply this way. It's because we're on a actually a garage floor. It's kind of funny if I sit in that chair, it'll roll. <laughs> I'll roll down the bench if I don't grab the bench or something. It's a true story. Um, I had to build this wooden base for these shelves because there's a uh, concrete. Um, I think foundation where the wall of the garage sits on that's different than the floor and uh, the shelves would have been sticking out to here if I would have pushed them up against that concrete floor so I just built a shelf and uh, supported it and these uh, plastic shelves just sit on top of that obviously and everything fits every one of these shelves fit in my other room underneath uh, underneath my shelving and they uh, I was able to rearrange it with the taller some taller shelving down here and some shorter shelving down here. Anyway, it all works very good. The undercounter lighting is nice because if I drop a part, this makes it easier to find. And also my smaller workspace down here, there's less places for this part to go flying. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have you know to worry about you know a 20 foot area. I only have you know a 10 by 10 foot area or so here. And uh, this under counter lighting really lights the floor up so it makes it easier to find things. Also, it makes it easier to see what's in these drawers when I open them up. So that's my modeling space walk around. Um, it's been a lot of work, but it was well worth it. And the benefit is, is I got a happy wife who's got her own, she's got an extra bedroom. So uh, this has been a lot of work, but uh, I'm glad it's over and I'm really glad to be getting back to building models. 
I'm definitely going to be picking up some of my old projects and jumping on them right away. And uh, anyway, we'll see you guys on the boards and happy modeling. This is Frank signing off.